Hey guys, thanks for checking out the podcast. Before we get started, I want to remind you about the very cool bucket list trip I am doing in 2026, the Smitty Learns Irish podcast, where I'm going to do my bucket list, hike Ireland for a year, learn about Irish history, town by town, through the mouths of the pub owners and regulars. Because what's a better way to learn about something you love than to experience it yourself? Patreon.com forward slash we the number three Smiths, only three bucks a month, and thanks for checking it out. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. 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 What the hell? Everything! Oh boy! Hi! A very fucking happy what the hell everything day. Uh, what the fuck's going on? Hi, it's me. <laughs> uh, Smitty, the What the Hell Everything podcast. Uh, thanks for joining me for Weedness Day, October 19th, 2022. Almost got stumbled up on the year. Coming up, uh, brand new 420 break. Uh, and uh, actually, a lot to get through today. It's been a fucking roller coaster of peaks and valleys and emotional peaks and valleys for me. From a mental health day, all kinds of fucking shit. Uh, I did want to mention, we, if anybody is following the What the Hell Everything Facebook page, you might notice we... Uh, uh, to do the when I say we, my friend Ryan and I, and Tim, when he comes on, uh, do a uh, Detroit Lions recap every week after the game, and they had a bye week, so we didn't do it this week, and it was a really nice fucking change of pace to not watch the Lions lose. You know, I got to watch the Packers lose, I got to watch the Cowboys lose, and it's always a second best, second. Uh, it's always a runner up to the Lions winning is either the Packers or uh, Dallas. <laughs> losing uh it makes my fucking day man uh man but it has honestly <sighs> been a roller coaster of peaks and fucking valleys man an emotional roller coaster i made a post about my cat the other day and apparently cats just reflect the personalities of their owner because i posted god this cat's been in a fucking emotional wreck lately so i got him a new toy and honestly that cat has <sighs> I talked about it on a previous podcast, all the moving and the crate fucking carrying and all sorts of stuff, being in a new place with almost no windows in a really small, cramped apartment. And uh, I'm pretty sure he has salmon PTSD because I lured him into the cart the last time with salmon. And I'm pretty sure he was never going to fucking eat it again because I'm like, oh, man, I want to buy him salmon. He had a birthday the other day. <laughs> I'm going to get him some salmon for his fucking birthday. And uh, won't touch it. He fucking was like, what the fuck is that? And like jumped away from it. Even tuna fish. I gave him tuna on his birthday too. And I made a sandwich. I gave him a little leftover. Didn't want that either. I think he's turned off by fish, man. <sighs> but apparently uh, I might have to get a new sort of birthday treat for that cat. Because he has just been a giant a-hole. And again, <sighs> really fucking probably mirrors the personality of its owners man i took a mental health day on monday and i just needed to sometimes as i like to say you shouldn't be anywhere near microphone <laughs> me personally uh and that is simply because like to say i wasn't feeling it on monday with a podcast would have been an understatement it's, it's just an understatement i like many people uh battle depression and every once in a while, man, you get those fucking days that you're just like, I can't do this today. You know, just everything just seems to be fucking weighing on you. 
And uh, I'm like, all of this podcast stuff that I'm doing today, minus this bit right here, uh, was scheduled for Monday. And I looked at all of it, and I had prepped it all and had a great time coming up with it on the Sunday morning uh, talk practice that I do on Patreon. And I had a great podcast. And it's such a weird fucking thing, too, because, like, I say peaks and valleys, highs and lows, man. Uh, you know, it was Team Smitty season. <laughs> That's uh, my favorite time of year, one of my favorite times of year when it pops up on Facebook Memories, T- uh, Team Smitty. Unaware of the backstory, uh, I got shit canned from radio once uh, for some fucking bullshit that people made up and made people, advertisers, believe that I said swear words over the air. It was not the case. It was internet. And uh, I was fucking fired with no, like, just knee-jerk fired. Because, oh, advertisers say you swore on the air. We're not going to be on the fucking station if that guy is. Ugh. Very quickly after I got shit-canned, they were like, oh, we fucked up, and you didn't really do that. And the listener fucking response when I got shit-canned was overwhelming including advertiser backlash that said, hey, we know that uh, this particular other radio station fucking sabotaged your ass, so we're going to pull all of our millions of dollars from that fucking station too. So that was pressure on the company to bring me back. Uh, and all, and I, you know, when we figured out I was coming back, we played it off like... Uh, uh, the, I think what was in the works for it was in the works for a couple months and it finally got finalized and we're like all right we got to play this off if smitty's coming back we're going to play it off like hey we're going to introduce the new afternoon show host and and then have it be smitty and i made it uh we we uh put the i'm trying to figure out the way it worked what was the best what how did it go we played it off that the radio station was introducing their new afternoon host on at the bar, Right Brain Brewery, that I was now working at. So it was like, what the fuck are these radio people thinking having this party here while I'm working? My old job is having a party for the person who replaced me at my new job was essentially it. I'm like, fuck these people. Team Smitty, show up and represent when no, none of them knew uh, that uh, it was an actual welcome back party for me. So it turned into this awesome fucking thing where friends and listeners I had. Uh, Brad made a T-shirt, Team Smitty. Uh, Nikki and Rick, longtime listeners, made Team Smitty shirts, made me a Team Smitty shirt. And it's just looking back on it, it is such a crucial fucking moment in my life because it was right around then that I realized, like, <sighs> there's a lot of people that like what I do. You know, it didn't didn't always work like that in my head. I was always like, I kind of suck at this job, you know, but it was a crucial moment. So when those memories pop up, I love going through like the comments and like how excited people were to have me back and to try to get me back. And, you know, and seeing that stuff helps, you know, Team Smitty season, you know, especially once you get into like winter depression, it's almost like perfectly placed seasonally. And even that this time was, it was like, oh man, I love Team Smitty season. I suck at everything. And that's how it felt. I have for like three days, man. It was just fucking, people talk about the pressure, you know, (laughs) where it just, you get frozen and you can't fucking do anything. And a lot of that has to do, or a lot of this, this time, I think. Uh, on top of like, you know, I'm working full time, essentially at this other job, loving it, making great money, trying to fit in all this podcast stuff, the reaction videos, all this creative stuff that I'm still trying to do. And I'll talk about that uh, coming up in a moment, you know, and you're like, oh, I fucking don't have it in me today. And this time again, uh, a large part of it is that I fucking started smoking again. I hate even saying that out loud because I'm so fucking pissed off at myself probably three months ago now I haven't told any of my fucking friends a couple of select people that I see at like uh fresh coast where I do trivia nights on Tuesday and a couple people I work with that are also smokers at the other job you know but I haven't told my parents when I was staying at my parents for the summer I think I started smoking again 
mid July, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I was going to my parents' house after fucking work at the casino one night, and I was just like, I didn't know what I was going to do. I felt like I was just regressing to like when I got out of the army 20 plus years ago, and I stayed with my parents for four months until I found a place. And I worked at the casino fucking back then, too. And I was just like, I feel like a complete fucking failure. And I remember I pulled into the fucking gas station, the Shell station in Kalkaska. I'm like, fuck it. If I'm going to regress, I'm going to go all the way. And I fucking bought a pack of cigarettes and just drove around Kalkaska County for like two fucking hours just smoking. (laughs) And I kept it for my parents. I'm pretty sure they didn't know. I don't know how they didn't fucking smell it on me. They never said anything. They could have smelled it and said, you know what? We're not going to fuck with him. I don't know. But I've just been so fucking disappointed in myself, you know, and but to me, every fucking day is still the last day because I'm still not fucking done quitting or won't quit quitting is the best way to pull it, put it because I'm not working out because I'm fucking smoking and I'm like, I can't smoke and fucking run on the elliptical and do my weed day workouts, you know, (sighs) sometimes it just fucking gets you down and whatever you got to do to pull yourself out of it man you know i feel the need to talk about this stuff when it happens because it happens to fucking pretty much everybody you know what i mean in different ways like i saw somebody post today on facebook and i didn't comment or anything on it but it was essentially a cry for help you know saying that he was suicidal and he didn't want to live anymore and he was useless and all this shit and i wanted to say and i didn't it's it's always worse in your head than what it is in real life. You know, people that suffer from like mental illness and depression and all that stuff, man, it is in your head. Essentially, your brain fabricates all of these fucking negative, terrible thoughts that you uh, uh, tell yourself, you know. It's like, and whatever you got to do to get out of it. You just got to remember it's in your head and whatever you got to do. Like the other day, I legit like Stuart fucking Smalley stood in the mirror and said, motherfucker, you can do this. You got this, you know, and it didn't necessarily help at the time. But, uh, you know, I want to say for two or three days, I was just frozen, just like sitting here. I still went out and did the things I need to do, but I'm like, I can't do a fucking podcast today. You know, and a big thing on Monday that really helped me, I decided I wasn't going to do the podcast. And I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? Because I'm doing this project uh, uh, that I will tell you about right now. (laughs) What a transition. (laughs) Uh, You know, if if you follow me for any length of time, you followed me on the radio, you know I love to do these like audio productions where scripted, this is not scripted, uh, but it's in, in a similar vein. And one of my passion projects, I did Smitty's Christmas Carol that I adapted the Dickens script with a whole cast of people on the radio. And I did Substitute Santa, which was an original script where me and Brother Levi flew around the world uh, subbing in for Santa. And it was just super fun. Some of it was stupid. And I've never, you know, I've always wanted to do like voice acting and like writing scripts. And this is my bridge into that. You know, I'm learning how to do it, so to speak. Some of them are good. Some parts are good. Some parts are not that good. But the whole package is pretty charming. Anyway, the point of the fucking story is one of my bucket list projects that I want to do, and I don't know why. Just because it seems fucking fun, like something I want to do is to do a live reading of, I'm holding the book up to the camera, uh, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. I had had plans to do like a cast with it, and I'm like, you know what, what would be more fun is just to do a live reading on Halloween night, and I think I'm going to do it at 8 o'clock, uh, uh, And it's just going to be a straight through live read of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I have some effects that I'm going to use, some mood ambient uh, backgrounds. I'm not going to be on camera while I'm reading it because that's going to give me fucking anxieties. (laughs) But I've so the other day, one thing that got me out of it, I'm like, I need to be creative. Me personally. When I'm having moments like that, being creative is a great outlet to kind of bust out of it. So what I did, I have probably read this out loud twice. I have a real hard time reading things out loud because 
similar to the stuttering Smitty thing, my brain goes too fast. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things going in there and I'll skip ahead and fuck up words. And I'm like, man, this is going to be real tough. And I had planned on doing it. So I committed to just reading the whole thing through. I'm actually uh, torn between how I want to read it. Do I want to read it the straight up Smitty fucking voice, more or less? Uh, while enunciating and reading slow. Reading slow is not my uh, preferred method. But like, for instance, I'll read the first paragraph. I'm going to read it in the two accents. And then you tell me what you think. Found among the papers of the late Diedrich Knickerbocker. A pleasing land of drowsy head it was, of dreams that wave before the half-shut eye, and of gay castles in the clouds that pass, forever flushing round a summer sky castle of indolence <laughs> uh, so that's the voice i would read it in and did rehearse it the other night it'd be about 90 minute production 90 minutes hour 45 something like that i'll have a couple breaks in there but this is the other voice kind of like my old timey voice and like i always think i'm like god uh it sounds like the bing crosby narration of legend of sleepy hollow on disney and i'm like well that's what i gotta go with that's what i gotta go with because it's the only voice i got for this thing uh, in the bosom of one of those spacious coves which indent the eastern shore of the Hudson, at that broad expansion of the river denominated by the ancient Dutch navigators, the Tappan Zee, and where they always prudently shortened sail and implored the protection of St. Nicholas, where they crossed, there lies a small market town or rural part, which is some by called Greensburg, but which is more generally and properly known by the name of Terrytown. So those are the two options. <laughs> I don't know which I'm going to read it in yet. I'm pretty much partial to that second voice. <sighs> Point of the story is, is I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But just making myself do that with the effects in my head, I could actually play uh, some of the clips, but I'm not going to do that of my rehearsal. Anyway, <sighs> that helped me. Doing some videos yesterday helped me, reaction videos, and then going to trivia. Just... <sighs> Again, I'm going out and doing the things I need to do. I'm not a complete fucking shut-in when I'm feeling like this. But those feelings pass is the point of the story. You have to get, you have to convince yourself, however the fuck you got to do it, that that's made up, man. You know, I have uh, so many goals and things I want to do, and yet your brain tells you you can't do those things, you know? And I'm perfectly fucking well aware that I am and that the path before me is looking more and more clear like it can happen if you stick to it and do it every fucking day. So there you go. You know, that's why I didn't do a podcast on Monday. And, you know, again, I feel the need to talk about this because so many other people deal with it. You know what I mean? I'm okay. This is my therapy. This fucking podcast is my therapy. You know, other people don't have this outlet or a, another outlet to use. You know, uh, I've always been that type of person that feels like, like, fuck, did you see that fucking react? That, that's another reason that I'm awesome is because I still got fucking mad react speed. I seriously... Uh, I'm going to have to create a video where that's a fucking replay. <laughs> I don't know if you could even see it through the microphone. Anyway, the point of this fucking story is, <laughs> is that uh, shit gets better, man. You know, it's all in your fucking head. And uh, what else was I going to talk about? What else was I going to talk about? <laughs> the point of the story is, is like, I'm okay. I have this fucking option. Not a lot of other people or a lot of other people don't have options or don't think they have options, you know, find somebody you trust to talk to. If it's not a therapist, you know, talking helps. And again, I, that before I knock the water over, I'm one of those type of people that I have to talk about the shit that's in my head, you know, like right now saying these words, I feel the best I've felt in fucking days. And today has been a pretty good day. But just saying the words out loud is a big fucking sigh. <sighs> sometimes you just got to let it out. It's the never ending sigh sometimes, as I like to say. Uh, anyway, I'm okay. You're okay. You're fucking awesome. I'm fucking awesome. It's time for your 420 break. Hallelujah. 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 
time to get made for this, boys. Water bomb so smooth, you don't realize how high you're getting. Till it's too late. I am fucked up out here. <laughs> All right, your 420 break for Weedness Day, October 19th, 2022. And a shocking development. <laughs> Jamaica, uh, who I guess, because I'm ignorant, uh, I just always thought that uh, drugs, weed specifically, uh, were just accepted. But no, it's uh, uh, not the case in Jamaica. Just banned music about drugs and crime on the radio. And essentially, you know, it boils down to the reason that the Jamaican Broadcasting Commission uh, said keeping the airwaves free of harmful content, given the important role traditional media still plays as agents of social socialization. Um, we'll delve into that in a moment. But essentially, because there's just so many fucking gangs and drug uh, 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 wars and all that shit in Jamaica, uh, drugs and guns, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that, you know, that's why they're doing it. Rife with gang violence, as uh, quoted in the Vice article. Uh, you know, I'm a firm believer that banning never helps a fucking thing. Uh, social change is probably the best idea. I don't know what the, the the social system is in Jamaica. Again, I'm pretty ignorant of that. But, uh, you know, so I don't know the answer. But, uh, uh, you know, I again... The go-to move is just to ban. Got to ban it. Got to ban it. Got to ban it. But I really only brought that up so I could uh, quote this fucking art. Uh, quote this uh, musician, which I do believe he is named, and he's got the best fucking quote ever. And I don't know how I'm going to pull off a Jamaican accent. I'm just going to try to read this word for word. Uh, or Revisin. Uh, is a Jamaican musician known as Revisin. Uh, good thing we don't need radio anymore. I can't remember last royalties they paid me. YouTube, the ting de anyway. Which I think is, uh, uh, YouTube is the thing there anyway, was what he was saying. I'm, uh, again, not the smartest man. I ain't smart, Jenny. Um, but... <laughs> uh, and I'm just like, that's fucking totally true, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh there you go i just made my day you know anytime you can throw a fucking radio disc in there it's perfect uh next on the 420 break uh this story is uh personal lubricant made from cow mucus may protect against hiv now first of fucking all <laughs> this is the shortest uh story that doesn't cite any fucking sources whatsoever so i'm like i don't even know if this is fucking real but it's hilarious a lubricant made from mucus and cow salivary glands has shown promise against hiv and a sexually transmitted herpes virus in a laboratory study fucking a uh in a laboratory study human epithelial cells were treated with a lubricant before being exposed to hiv or a herpes virus with subsequent infection rates being as low as 20 percent if that's true uh, they can manufacture that somehow, hopefully, uh, uh, clone at the mucus rather than just, how the fuck you do that? <sighs> fuck <'em. laughs> Sorry, that was stupid. Uh, next, on <laughs> the 420 break. <sighs> I'm a huge proponent of mental health, you know, and I'm a huge proponent of, uh, uh, you know, doing what it takes to feel comfortable. People with PTSD, uh, I'm not... I am not in one fucking bit uh, uh, questioning the need for emotional support animals. But when it's, you know, people taking a fucking peacock on the plane or whatever other fucking story. <laughs> like, you can let any animal into any fucking place now and just be like, it's an emotional support animal, you know? And they're like, fuck, I guess. I don't want to get fucking sued. Uh, but this guy can go fuck himself because really, uh, Joey Henny, uh, he's an alligator expert. I don't know what makes him an alligator expert. Maybe we'll get into that. I did read this story, but you know, I kind of skimmed. He says, Wally, the alligator poses no threat. He was found in a pond in Disney world. And it's illegal in Florida to relocate alligators to another spot in the wild. He agreed to take them in. Uh, Wally, the alligator, lives on Cheetos and chicken legs in his house. I've never... 
I have never met an alligator that will not bite you. This is quote. You fool around with their head. Their instinct is to grab you. No fucking shit, he says, but he does not do it. You can reach in there and rub his tongue. He refuses to close his mouth. We don't know why. Yet. <laughs> Man, go fuck this guy. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, uh, there should be a limit to some things, you know? Some things aren't okay. And as soon as that fucking alligator turns on some little kid, whoo! I'm not saying it will happen. I'm saying the odds are good. Like, how would you see that going? Fucking reptile. <sighs> Granted, there are other reptiles that are pets. The point of this story is, is that that's stupid. And that guy's stupid. Uh, this, I wanted to make fun of as much as possible. And I may still. Uh, and again, I am a firm believer that anybody with, like, challenges is more than capable of doing pretty much anything <laughs> uh but this woman blind arizona woman to pilot plane across the country quote we don't have limits shouldn't you though <laughs> again you should be able to do anything kayla kaya armstrong spent four months preparing for the journey of a lifetime and a student for the foundation for blind children in phoenix so i'm not gonna make fun of that like that's an awesome program uh, you know, and I went through this whole story yesterday, uh, being like, is it by herself? Cause that'll have fucking impress me, you know, down, 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 we go down, down, we go. And it's, you know, she's 21. She lost her sight when she was 14 and it's a really nice inspirational story. <laughs> and then sure enough, uh, she will be accompanied by, you know, person with sight to help her. Uh, and, and I know that's fairly dickish of me to say, uh, but, you know, however many years ago would it be when you didn't have the, uh, uh, the navigation and autopilot capabilities of, uh, of a plane? Like, you probably couldn't have done that 30 years ago, you know? But I hope you do it successfully, and uh, I think it's awesome. It doesn't sound like it. This fucking story wraps up the 420 break, and honestly, it's a lot of details, and it's a very, very long story, and I read most through most of it, uh, and it just fucking pisses me off. I'm not going to get into all the details, but what's that fucking quote? The rent's too damn high because of a fucking algorithm. <sighs> I don't know why. It's not shocking, but I see it, and it just pisses me off. There's a Texas-based company called Real Pages Yield Star. Now it is software that essentially raises your rent for the landlords. Uh, now they go on to the story to say that these fucking people, and I'm going to paraphrase a lot of it. Essentially, they're like, uh, this takes the empathy out of the out of raising rent. You know, everybody wants to raise rent. And they go on to say there's so many uh, communities that are using this software now. They're like, we don't think it's having as much of an effect as critics of it will say. Like, there's, I think, what a market was it? I think it was like somewhere in Portland, Oregon, or something like that. And I'm probably, I'm missing that actually. But <laughs> uh, I want to say there was probably 10 management companies rental management companies in this particular market and there was six to seven of them were using this algorithm uh and you know raising rent double digits and it's it just does it for you it sees what all the, the rest of the market's like what this algorithm does and uh figures oh you can fucking you know what the competition is, where the highest rent is paid. Well, we can match this and we can match that. And again, paraphrasing, but I know I heard the words, it takes the empathy out of it. And fuck, it's like people that, I think I said it a couple podcasts ago, like fucking poor people have so much against them as it is uh, with motherfuckers raising rent and fucking uh, your whole life. It's not as personal as I made it seem. Uh, that it's just like, here's another fucking hurdle you gotta face. You know what I mean? Where you got algorithms working against you. 
And it, as much as 14.5% apartment rents had recently shot up uh, in a video touting the company's services. Turning to his colleagues, the person asked, what role has the software played? Uh, and they say it's driving it, quite honestly. As a property manager, very few of us would be willing to actually raise rents double digits within a single month by doing it manually. And they're like totally swinging dick swagger with this. Yeah, we fucking did this. And they just go on and on in the story. If you're interested and you want the link to the story uh, from ProPublica, um, it's just, it fucking just pisses you off, you know? It's what the fuck you got to do. <sighs> cheery <laughs> that's your 420 break eat some doritos chill out get your ass back to work hey oh man i got the fucking munchies real bad how about you hey 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 smoke <laughs> weed every day <laughs> all right now you feel better you feel better uh let's get to a uh <laughs> another story that i thought about for the 420 break and i'm like you know what uh, I want to save this, and I didn't put it uh, into OBS so I could have it on the fly, but uh, let me see if I can find this picture real quick uh, and pull it up. Is this it? Please be it. Nope, that ain't it. <laughs> uh, I swear I have this somewhere. Uh, right there in that one. Oh, boy, here it is. Man. Let's talk about this bear attack and these two fucking guys. The guy on the right is uh, one of the most badass people <laughs> that I've read about in a very long time. All right. So uh, let me get the story up. And uh, because I'm all doing this on the fly, let's minimize that. Let's do this over here. Let's put this right here. Zoom. Just like that. Put that uh, uh, picture up just so you can see it. Because it's fucking terrifying. This is in uh, Wyoming. Yeah, Wyoming. Kendall Cummings is from Cowboy State Daily. Kendall Cummings could feel the grizzly bear's jaws tearing through flesh down to his skull. But the adrenaline coursing through his body made it a painless sensation. I could hear when his teeth would hit my skull. I could feel when he'd bite down on my bones and they'd kind of crunch. <laughs> Cummings told it Cowboy State Daily Monday morning. Cummings and his wrestling teammate at Northwest College in Powell, in Powell Brady Lowry, Brady's on the left, uh, were attacked by a grizzly bear Saturday afternoon outside Cody. The two survived but suffered serious injuries. The bear first attacked Lowry, the person with the least amount of injuries, it looks like. Uh... But Cummings, an Evanston native, jumped into action and pulled him off. I grabbed and yanked him hard by the ear, said Cummings, a sophomore. He successfully got the bear's attention, backing up as the predator re reared up toward him. He described the sensation of the bear's putrid breath, filling his nostrils and himself with a sense of dread. Oh, my fucking God. This is the most terrifying thing ever. <laughs> uh, the bear charged at Cummings with surprising speed, immediately knocking him to the ground. After a short while in the grip of Jaws, the bear left him. Cummings' thoughts were not on his own injuries, but rather that the bear would attack Lowry again. It was when he stood up to look for his teammate that the bear attacked again. He says, I called out to Brady to make sure he was all right, and I think the bear heard me. It kind of circled around and got me again. He said he fought back against the bear at first, but I quickly realized it was a fruitless endeavor. Eventually, the bear stopped its attack, and he lay still for a few minutes, hoping to avoid encounter number three. When it was clear the grizzly had gone, Cummings said he got up and rejoined Lowry. The bloody men that began their long trek then began their long trek down the mountain. They were with a few other friends. They had bear spray, etc., etc. Uh, both men have undergone multiple surgeries over the last couple days. Cummings received sixty staples in his head and plastic surgery to address. Major lacerations to his face. Man, what kind of fuck? I thought about, like, if that were me, it'd just, like, be like, leave that scar there. <laughs> oh, my God, what happened to you? A fucking grizzly bear. That's what. Uh, a major lacerations to his left arm and leg that doctors had to suture up and stitches on his right hand and right leg. Lowry suffered a broken arm, a compound fracture, 
and lacerations to his back, shoulder, right leg, and thigh. So not necessarily better, but fuck in A, man. These guys are wrestling teammates, too. And it just, you know, goes on, hey, we're fucking brothers, we're wrestling teammates, but that, that guy. Because, I mean, I don't know. In that situation, what the fuck am I going to do? I don't really think that I would have it in me to just, like, jump on a bear. It, if anything, I'm going <laughs> to try to uh, uh, just grab a stick, you know? Try to find a fucking stick, man. You know, that isn't going to do shit uh, to that bear probably about as much as jumping on its fucking back. But that guy, he's a wrestler, man. Who knows, you know? Uh, I do want to bring up another bear attack thing that I just pulled. I think it was from Joe Rogan's uh, Instagram page, and he posted this fucking bear attack. Uh, no, I just have to see if I can do it on the fly here. I should be fine as long as I can find it. I don't even know if I can pull this kind of format file up onto OBS, but we shall find out, shall we? Oh, yeah. Oh, go. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, my God. That bear was trying to get his fucking ass. Who knows if there were cubs around or whatever. But that is absolutely terrifying. No! That guy was so scared. <laughs> uh, it, it kept his composure. I don't know. Understand people that have feel the need uh, to keep their phone out. Is that just so when somebody finds you? Hey, I did fight off this bear. Just so you know, as much as I could. That's fucking terrifying. <laughs> uh, let's move on. I did want to bring this up because I thought it was fucking hilarious in a way. Uh, you know, I talked about the mental, my, my mental health earlier. And one of the, uh, it feels, it felt like the pinnacle of the depression last night, even though it was feeling better, but it hit me hard. And then I had a good fucking laugh and shook it off. And here's what happened. <laughs> I went outside to smoke some weed. Uh... And I have, a, I have a nice fucking glass bowl, you know, like, I don't know, a handcraft that I would assume it's all trippy looking. I fucking love it. I didn't name mine like Sledder, Sled Dog named his Gretchen, but I haven't, you know. Uh, and I went outside and I sat stupidly my fucking bowl that I love so much on this ledge. It's a concrete ledge. So it's kind of fucking, you know, but I always I'm like, oh, I got it in the spot. Or it's not going to fall. And I went outside last night. And that's another thing about like going outside to smoke and everything, too. It's You're outside feeling fucking miserable. Uh, and I was going outside to smoke, too. I'm like, if I'm going to smoke weed, I'm going to go outside and smoke a cigarette, too. So I set the bowl down. Go to light a cigarette. And that fucking bowl that I love so much, I watched that thing drop. As my, great as my reflexes were just a little while ago, I did not catch that one at all. That was not a high thing. I just caught it out the corner of my eye, and I turned around to see it fucking hit the ground and fucking the head come off it and explode. I'm just like, oh, man. <laughs> and I just like, it was like the classic fucking moment, uh, probably stoner moment, where you're just like, you just look down at it, and you don't say anything. And you're just looking. And then you just start fucking laughing because of course. Because I just got home from trivia. 10 o'clock at night. You know. I was tired. Wasn't feeling great. And my cat puked on the floor. And it was dry. And I fucking cleaned that up as best I could. I'm going to have to fucking clean the shit out of these carpets. And I'm like, and then something else happened too. I can't remember what exactly it was. Then I walked outside to smoke that fucking bowl, and I'm just like, <sighs> I just fucking stood dumbfounded just looking. I'm like, of course that happened. So that was like the pinnacle, and I'm just like, <sighs> I lost all sense of rage that I had. It spiked in me, <laughs> and then it went, <sighs> and I just laughed. 
And that's got to be one of my biggest, uh, my biggest attributes, like positive attributes. That if I am feeling like shit, I can kind of make myself laugh <laughs> a lot of times and uh, and get over it. And I just fucking sat looking at that thing and just fucking laughed. And I'm like, of course that happened, you know. And it was a li- really literally at that moment that I was just like, <sighs> there's a lot, there's a lot of people. And I hear them say that, and I try to reiterate this to them any chance I get when they say, God, it can't get any worse. What can happen next? Don't fucking say that shit. Because <laughs> it, it's not, first of all, anything can happen. Second of all, it's not you per se that is making, these things are not happening to you necessarily. You know what I mean? Yes, it's happening to you, but it's not like karma out to get you or anything like that. You know what I mean? That shit's fucking nonsense. Uh, It is to a certain extent true that if you manifest fucking negative behavior, because I've honestly have come to experience both uh, manifesting negative behavior and feeling poorly because of it. And then... Uh, over the last couple of years, really, with with my growth since the Team Smitty thing uh, and just kind of figuring myself out, you know, I'm ex- experiencing quite a bit of the other side of manifestation where you feel you, you're fucking doing shit and you're knocking shit out and you're making things happen and it makes you feel fucking great. You know what I mean? So, um, uh there was a way there was a point to the story and I'll probably come my long smitty ass way back to it at some point. The other part of this whole uh bowl breaking story, <laughs> I felt better about it. I'm like, "Well, I got to get another fucking bowl now because I broke the last one I had too. I had no other means of smoking and I don't like to roll joints cuz I roll them like a fucking idiot. I prefer my bowl." So I'm like, "Oh, wait, there's a fucking head shop right next to the laundry mat where I do laundry and I got to go do laundry today or tomorrow. So fucking A, I'll get another bowl." And I felt better. <laughs> Honestly, it's the little things that make me feel fucking better sometimes. "Oh, I'm going to get another bowl tomorrow. I'll just find a cheapie." And sure as shit, I walk in and like it wasn't open yet. I got there at like 8 to the laundry mat. The head shop didn't open till 9. And uh I went to go look at the hours. I didn't see the hours posted on the door at all. And I'm like, but I do see this fucking let's go Brandon sign. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, man, am I going to fucking uh, uh, sacrifice my scruples to get a fucking bowl? Yep. <laughs> I say that pretty much in jest. I mean, I have my strong opinions on the whole Trump movement and the let's go Brandon thing. I do know that there are so many good fucking people business owners, what have you, my neighbors and family for years that uh, are, uh, I just, I, I, I have to say Trump supporters, not even Republicans, pretty much just Trump supporters that I vehemently fucking disagree with. And I would consider them probably misguided. They would say the same thing of me, I'm sure. You know, uh, I don't want to use like that as an excuse, even though I vehemently disagree with fucking pretty much everything that the uh, Trump supporters are standing for lately and most of the time. Uh, I don't not want to ever. (sighs) See, I don't want to go to somebody's business because they believe something different politically than I believe, you know? So I totally sacrificed my scruples. And it was a very pleasant, she was a very pleasant person, you know, very nice person. Had a nice little conversation about your bowl breaking, you know. But as I walked out, there was was, they're selling T-shirts too, and I think the T-shirts were uh, "We Americans are pissed off." I'm like, well, what do you mean we? First of all, like I'm pissed off at a lot of things too, but I don't think we're as pissed off at the same people for the same fucking reasons. Your 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 life experiences are dictating why you're pissed off. My life experiences are dictating why I'm pissed off. And everybody else has their own. It's usually the thing that I disagree with most uh, from like Trump supporters and shit is it's just it's always my country. It's never our country. You know what I mean? Things are going to change from the way they've been my whole life, and I don't fucking like it. You know? Anyway. 
I got a new bowl, and it's only 10 bucks. and it's pretty fucking rad, and it's rubber, so it's not going to fucking break. How can you smoke a bowl with rubber? I, uh, I can't remember what the actual thing that is made of that is uh, silicone, maybe? That's how. Science! Hey, thanks for watching the podcast. Please like and subscribe, all the things. And uh, remember, Patreon. Live streams on Patreon when it does live stream. And uh, going down rabbit holes for reactions on Patreon, too. And it's a huge support for the Smitty Learns Irish podcast coming in 2026. This is how I'm funding the whole thing. So, uh, you guys. Oh, and I didn't even give a shout out to my sponsor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kevin and M22. Sutton's Bay, Northern Michigan has the greatest, quaintest, little, comfortable, little inn and affordable, I might add, right along at West Grand Traverse Bay. And uh, I love those guys. I love that they're on board. I love what they offer. I love the, the little spot. You see that little bench right there? If you're watching the video, see the little bench right along the uh, lake? That's uh, the bench I sat and smoked marijuana in when I stayed there in April. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm out. Have a good one. Thanks, everybody. So long, sucker. Good night, everybody. I'm so, so sorry for everything that has happened. Me, 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 me. Bye bye. Yeah, all right. I'll see you guys there. Yeah. Bought a barn. Get your <laughs> face, huh? Give me paid, bitch. Sit, boo boo. Sit. Good job. I love y'all very much. Peace out. Good night, ladies. What the hell, everything?